they weren't a burden to nobody, but they led by the example of working with their own hands. You know what I'm saying? Their own hands. So, um, that's what we do, work with our hands to help build the nation. Building houses, uh, agriculture, planting seeds, taking care of land. Uh, and that land, well, y'all see that land, we're going out to the land in a couple of days. So I have some of that footage uh, for YouTube as well, just to show the idea of what we're talking about. Coming together and putting our resources together to purchase these things and build upon them and maintain assets where we can sustain ourselves more and uh, be able to pass these on to our children. As y'all said, some of our little brothers is out here learning these skills. All the projects we do, them, and on the projects where our little sisters could get involved, they'll be involved in it as well so that they can learn the skills. You know what I mean? That's what's that's about. Can I tell the truth, huh? Tell the truth. Can I tell the truth? Tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. Tell the gospel truth. Tell the gospel truth. Tell the gospel truth. Tell the gospel truth. Our fathers ain't teach us nothing. And this is not to be, you know, I don't talk a whole bunch about negative about my father. But that led to us doing certain activities. Now, we could blame them. That's one thing. But they didn't teach us nothing. We teach these young men and stuff now. Like, yo, what you doing when you 17? Okay, I'm just building a garage in my spare time for some change or something. Right. And we got to teach these people. That's right. Because not actually... Like, you know, the revelation say, the book of Revelation say, do the do the Right. Oh, yo, this is it. Wow. It's a living, breathing organism that porch got to get put off. His kids got to jump off and six feet. It's not the right. They had <laughs> Preach! Preach! Preach, your own. Preach was missing in the world. Word of God is the culture. You read in the Bible. And when you read the book of Ezra, it's my height, man. The book of Ezra, the second chapter, there were some Israelites for hey, some people. Uh, grab that came back into the land I was when genealogy wasn't found. Right. And the thing about it is, that's very important. That's something that's overlooked by a lot of Bible readers. They don't listen. Pay attention to the genealogy. In order for you to actually be in the kingdom, the earthly kingdom at that time, you literally had to be accountable. People right. knew you. Because they knew your father was a person. Knock, yo, you can knock that off with your hand. Raising that that's that right here. If your father was a carpenter and he built houses, well, they knew you because you was raising that boy. You wasn't just the son of. Uh, yeah, knock that off. Knock that such. concrete off with the hammer. Take it you out just of because you was the hammer. Right you might there. Was birth and born out of that, but you also was the son of such and such. Yeah. Because you did the same thing your father. Did. Man, just take the concrete out of you. So the understanding of the culture of the Bible is this: you are a seed of your father physically, but you also a seed of your father because you did the same work your father did. Right. Every priest was not known simply because you was the bloodline of Aaron, so to say, but because you was actually trained in the ways of before, I thought I was before you. And a lot of cats, man, if, if, if you didn't do the work while you was in captivity, if you didn't do the work while you was in uh, Babylonian captivity, guess what? It probably wouldn't recognize you. That's right. No, you're right. Only the priest who was actually doing the work to your father was that, probably reckoned by genealogy. That's a heavy thing. Right. This is a culture. And it is not a culture to be taken in life. That's right, bro. Shalom, Mishim Yeshua, Mushiach, Ha-Melech, Ha-Olam, Ha-Melech, Yisrael. King of the world, baby. That's up. So you gotta see what we got now. We got Monty finishing off some screws. We came a long way with this porch deck. Did a pretty good job. Pretty good job. Now you know, I know y'all heard us say a couple things. I know that uh, some cats may be like, well, yo, just because y'all doing a porch, what that got to do with the kingdom of God? Well, the Lord said that if, uh, if there's a breach in the house and it's not repaired, that it shall fall through and the house eventually will be destroyed. Um, when it came time to build in Israel, our fathers had to have skills and they had to pass those skills to their sons. You know, in 40 years of building the temple, they had to have skills. They even built the wall. And one thing is that we have to have the skills. Food, clothing, and shelter are the basic necessities of man. 
and you know some people want to be graphic type designers, some people want to be accountants, and stockbrokers, lawyers, and you know, I mean, in this society, in this current system, it is what it is. But I tell you this: um, when all of those things fail, and man is at their very bare bones of survival, man is going to need a roof over his head to protect his flesh and blood from the elements. Uh, he's going to need food in his belly, and he's going to need clothing on his back, and those are the cottage basic industries of man that we survive by. So if we can sustain ourselves with keep building and keeping our homes up, with agriculture and raising animals, even if you can't produce 100% of what you eat, if you could produce 50, 60, 70%, you are freer than the average person. And if you can make your own materials to make your own clothes, then you are even closer to freedom than you think. You know, we make other people rich by buying their clothes. How did Gandhi help free India from the rule of the British? That man spin and wove his own garments and walked around looking like he had on a towel and a loincloth. But he made it by his own hands and said he wouldn't wear anything else British made or European made until his countrymen and his people were free. And it worked. But we just don't have that same tenacity a lot of us. But there are those, you know, in teaching these children. Okay, but they can't, they're going to bring us some more screws back. And, and, and teaching these children, what it does is the simple act of helping now turns into, you know, like I told my sons, look, you could go out here and sell drugs in the community and think you a big boy and ride around flashy and have lots of money and lots of trouble. Or you could learn how to fix roofs and you can take a roof off, you could de-shingle a roof, uh, you could put brand new plywood up. Uh, uh, water and ice shield, felt paper, drip edge, and then you could go ahead and learn how to lay shingle from the bottom up, and then learn how to create your caps at the tops around the eaves and the gables of the house. You could do that in a week, and you could go and you could charge somebody ten grand to do it. Materials cost three thousand, four thousand dollars for five, six days worth of work. You done grossed six grand. And if so, if you got about a four or five man crew, you split it with your people. You and your brothers all walk away with like 1200 for five days work. Honest work. You understand? So it's just understanding skill and also understanding that that's what it takes to build a nation. So all I can say to you all is that that's the importance of it. These little things now train up a child in the way he or she shall go when they older they won't depart. These young men will fall back. But not just fall back. As far as I'm taking this thing, I'm taking it really a million years. But in doing these skills to maintain the community aspect. Pretty good over there. Keep it up. Don't be don't be slow about it. Mm-hmm. All right, brothers and sisters. Y'all see, we are in the final stage for the day. The Shabbat is coming in. Y'all see the skies. Y'all can tell by the camera that it's getting dark. Brothers out here cleaning up. Got brother Nashawn there, brother Efren, myself. Okay, go ahead. We closing out. It's the Shabbat, so we'll see you next time we're doing carpentry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be Shabbat, and we're gonna head it out. Head it out. Sunday, Sunday. That's right. We out here Sunday. Yeah. We out here Sunday. We're gonna be out here Sunday again. We're gonna have it out here Sunday again. We get. You got um, the main part finished. Um, Shot nervous. The floor is there, so if you come back, if you come back Sunday, you'll see, you'll see, and we'll have an, we'll have another show for you. Right. We have a cookout Take tonight. Care. So basically, uh, brothers and sisters, see the finished work. Um, we is able to get a lot done, and uh, we we thankful to the Most High. Get from behind me. Don't play. Uh, like I said, uh, we finished the work for the day. The Shabbat is coming in. Probably got about another 20 minutes or so before it's totally dark outside. 
So we're gonna we ending it. Final cleanup. We're gonna go over here to sisters and brothers on the other side of town at one of the other community houses. They did barbecue and cooking. So we're gonna go over there and join them because we hungry. We've been out here for about.